Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. In this video, we're going to be talking about redundant air sources and what a true redundant air source is and what a spare air is. Stick with me. I wanted to do a video about redundant air sources and there's quite a bit of difference between what's known as a redundant air source and something that's called a spare air. Now I'm in the perfect location behind me you see all the spear guns and a lot of times spear fisher people they tend to go out and, they not, and they're not necessarily next to each other. And so there could be a little space, their, their mind is focused on, on things other than their dive buddy per se, they're not communicating perfectly together, and they run the risk of running out of air. We want to do everything we possibly can to prevent running out of air. Maybe you've got a, a computer that is air integrated, maybe one on your console or one that utilizes a transmitter. Uh, then make sure you're setting that so that it alarms to let you know that you're getting low on air. In addition, diving with a buddy that's one of the responsibilities between buddies is looking at your buddy and going, hey, you, how much air do you have? And of course, if your buddy asks you how much air you have and you respond, your buddy etiquette says your buddy should tell him how much air you have so that once you've reached that low on air point between the two of you, that you're gonna begin making your ascent to your safety stop. Let's take a look at the parts and pieces and a little bit about the terminology because we hear a lot about the term pony bottle. And the term pony bottle is sometimes a little bit misused, but again, it just means like a pony compared to a big horse. That's the, the comparison per se. You're also gonna hear terms out there about deco bottle or bottles, uh, bailout bottles, that sort of thing. I prefer to utilize the term redundant air source. Now on our normal BC, and I've got a BC tank and, and regulator set up here, our regular yellow hose octo is called a alternate air source because it comes from our primary air source that if we have a problem, yes, we could go to it, but mainly it's meant, this yellow hose is meant to pass off to somebody else. About 80% of the people in the world today are trained to look for the yellow hose octo. And remember, somebody that has an out of air situation may not be your dive buddy, and they may not be coming directly at you so you're looking them in the eyes. They may come from the back, and this yellow hose is something that they've been trained to look for. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about the parts and pieces of redundant air source, and then I'm going to talk about the spare air. A redundant air source means we've got a separate tank, and this happens to be a 19 cubic foot aluminum tank, and this has what we call a pro valve in it, and I'll get some close-ups of this stuff in a minute. In addition, we've got a separate first stage regulator. This happens to be a HOG D2. It utilizes a DIN configuration for our setup. And this is nice because it keeps the profile nice and small and compact instead of having the yoke sticking out in the back. The D2 by HOG is also uh, environmentally sealed, which again is really nice in colder water, salt water, dirty water, that sort of thing. Now, what I've done, I've also mounted here on the side a small gauge, so it's real easy to see exactly how much air you've got in your redundant air source tank. So that's what we've got here. Now, 
One of the things about it, I tend, if I'm going to use an alternate air source, I'm gonna mount it on this side of my BC. So what I normally do is I take a low pressure port here, and then I will take my alternate air source, and this happens to be a hog octo on a braided 40 inch hose. Very nice octo, easily used for this. And I'm going to connect this into my first stage off of this port. So now I've got this configuration attached to my alternate air source tank. Now this can be brought around, I'm gonna show you in a minute, and can be uh, attached on your uh, kit on your BC or backplate and wing or whatever you happen to dive with here in the somewhere in the golden area. And of course, really the redundant air source is meant for you, not necessarily your buddy. Now, can you use a different color hose? Of course you can. We set up some of these with a, a blue hose or a red hose or that sort of thing, just to have a specific difference between the uh, alternate air source and the redundant air source. Now, how do we mount the redundant air source tank onto our standard tank configuration? And for this, we use a block, and these blocks are made with different arcs in them so that this matches up with the circumference of your tank and to match up with the tank that you're putting it on. And of course, this is an 80 cubic foot tank. And of course, the same thing would apply for say a steel 100 because it's the same diameter. So that is basically a redundant air source. Now, personally, if I'm gonna use a redundant air source, I tend to take and what, use what's known as a necklace. I'll put a necklace here. I'll attach my redundant air source here and leave my alternate air source located here where I normally would pass off my alternate air source to somebody. So the spare air has become pretty widely known. You have to remember what you're dealing with here as far as as air capacity and what depths you're going to be diving to. To give you some understanding, this spare air is three cubic feet. Yes, it's all self-contained and it's a spiffy looking little piece and it's just fine if maybe all you're diving to is say 25 or 30 feet at the most. It will give you a couple of minutes of air to get from 25 or 30 feet up to the surface. Now, if you're diving at the 100, say 60 to 100 foot, this is really not going to provide you with enough air to safely and slowly make it to the surface. This particular tank here I've got this is a 19 cubic foot of air. And of course, if you're at 100 feet and all of a sudden, lo and behold, you run out of air, then if you go to this redundant air source, you're gonna have somewhere between five and eight minutes to get to the surface at a leisurely pace from that 100 foot uh, depth. And you're gonna be a lot calmer a lot safer knowing that you've got more air. So I would be extremely cautious about diving to any depth beyond 25 feet with a spare air. Is it a nice idea? Yes, it's a great idea. A redundant air source is a better idea. The difference in price between a spare air and a full-blown redundant air source is not huge. So make sure you take a look. Again, I'm gonna put the descriptions down below the links. You can take a look and do some comparisons for yourself. In addition, 
if you've got a, a buddy or a loved one that's a spearfisher person, then, or maybe they're a photographer and they tend to do some things by themselves, especially as a solo diver, it is imperative that you use a redundant air source. Now I'm gonna show you quickly how to mount this on the, the standard setup. Stick with me. All right, so I've got my 19 cubic foot tank and you can see right here, um, this is called the pro valve and the pro valve is a situation where you can use it as a yoke or you can use it as a den. You take a 5 16 uh, Allen wrench and you can take this insert out. I've already taken it most of the way out. I've got my gauge attached right here. You can see that. You can see my den fitting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this and, and you can see that's nice and compact there. Works out real good. So what you're gonna see, we need a little distance here on the right side of the tank to be able to mount our block. So I'm gonna take my block here and I'm gonna slip it over the strap and snug my cam and pull it on over and seal it down. So now I've got my block here and we've got a nice little uh, pretty much a quick detach style of configuration here so I can loosen up my strap, make sure I've got enough room here to get my tank through. And what I want to do is position it so it helps my buoyancy, get some pressure on it and pull across. So now you can see my a redundant air source tank is attached to my regular tank and system. And then all I have to do is bring my hose around and attach it either, like I said, with my necklace and bring it around and attach it however I see fit. And some of us, again, like I said before, will utilize a different color hose. Now, if this is around and this is turned on, of course, when I dive, and maybe somebody came over and grabbed this and pulled it, could they breathe off of it as a alternate air source? Absolutely. But it's one of those things where, remember, a redundant air source is meant for you, not necessarily for somebody else. It is not meant to make your safety stop zone. It's not meant to breathe your tank down to zero and then shift to this to make your ascent to the surface. That's not what it's meant for. So I wanna remind you folks about that. But I appreciate you guys watching. There's gonna be links down below for all of this equipment. If you have questions about it, call the 800 number. Everybody there is well versed in redundant air sources. Just say, hey, I'm interested in that system Bob was talking about on the video. If you haven't subscribed, please reach down and hit that subscription button. We're almost to 5,000 subscribers. And if you've got comments or suggestions, maybe you use a redundant air source for your diving, leave a, a comment down below. I always enjoy reading those. Thanks again for watching. I'm Bob Collins for Diver Supply. And as we always say, dive safe out there and this will make you safer. Thanks.